Next is Capsules. Capsules is an interactive timeline creator that students can use to create a variety of timelines for really the sky is the limit on this. Um, they can create a timeline of their own learning. They can create timelines based on history, um, historical events. They can create a timeline uh, throughout a book that they're reading, kind of chronicling the events in order. Um, the possibilities with this one are really endless. What I like about Capsules is it gives students a place to kind of pull all of those other Web 2.0 projects that they're doing into one place that organizes them really well and gives them a place to kind of reflect on each of their projects. So as we get started here, I'll log in with just a generic um, account that I created. Students will need a email address to sign up for capsules and you can use a throwaway email address it doesn't have to be um, an actual email ad address you can use something like tempinbox.com or mailinator.com those um, allow you allow students to go in and um, confirm the account without giving away any personal information you can also create accounts for your students using those temp inboxes. Um, that's great if you're teaching elementary students that you kind of need to have control and, and you know, if they're not old enough to create their own accounts, that's a good way to do it. Or by creating a classroom account. What a classroom account lets you do is um, create one account for your students and multiple capsules and timelines can be created within one account. So, um, you know, students can create capsules within that classroom account, or you can create a capsule as a whole class using an interactive whiteboard or a projector connected computer. And just throughout the year as you are learning things as a class, you can just add to that class, um, use it as kind of a class receptacle to, to hold all of those things. So those are a couple different ways you can use it. I'm going to start out here just by creating a new capsule. So I go to create and select new capsule. And once I'm in here, um, you'll see all of the all of our tools are on that left sidebar in that accordion menu. They're really easy to use. It's it's very straightforward. So this is truly all of our uh, tools right here on the left. So first, we'll add a title and a description for our capsule. And I'm just going to do a demo on astronomy. And we can add a description. That's optional. Um, you can change anything about the way that the the title looks, and you don't even have to display the title. So kids usually like coming in here and playing with the colors and sizes. Um, you can add glows and all of those fun things. So that's pretty straightforward as far as how, how that works. Next is tags and categories. This is up to you. If you want to include tags and categories, it makes your capsule searchable. Um, what I like about using tags and categories within capsules is using it as an opportunity to teach kids about how to tag, what tags are used for, um, and, and why it's important to kind of use them. So um, I also, you know, if we're using it as a class project, I also like to use it as an opportunity to talk about the things we will be learning as we study astronomy. So we might talk about space, um, the universe, planets, moon, stars, satellites, rockets, scientists, and on and on and on. So we could talk about all of those things, just a brief overview of here's what we're going to learn in astronomy. And then as far as a category, I, I like to tell kids that they won't always find the exact category, and sometimes that irks them. They want to find the exact title astronomy. In this case, astronomy does exist, but we talk about how it's a subcategory to science and technology. So if astronomy didn't exist, we could fit it under science and technology, and it's actually right here. So I'll go ahead and check that. Next, we want to add content, so we'll just click Add Content. There's three different ways to add content to a capsule, to a timeline. The first is to directly upload to the timeline. And what that allows you to do is take one date, one event, and add one piece of video or a document or an image to that one period of time. Um, the next way is to upload a stack. And what that lets you do is create, is upload multiple images, videos, documents to one period of time. So for example, if we're learning about um, you, you know, astronomy and we find out that 
during one period of time, there were a lot of different inventions, there were a lot of different things happening and discoveries being made, we could add all of those videos and images that we had collected based on that time um, as a stack so that when you click on that time period, this whole stack comes up. If you are doing something like um, you know, chronicling what's happening in a book, you may only need one piece of, um, of content associated with that time period. And then the last way you can add content is through a blog post and you can blog directly to the timeline. So I'm going to show you a stack just so we can um, see that the upload directly to my timeline works just the same. But we get this great pop-up. Um, we come up with a stack title and we'll just call this one planets. Oops, and description, I'm just going to be really descriptive here. Um, and then we can go in and we can change the date. So it defaults to today's date, but what we can do, let's say that we were talking about discoveries of planets and we were going to you know, talk about something that happened in 1945. You can choose a date in 1945, and when you select that date, it actually changes it to the past. So regardless of what the date is, that can be adjusted. And then the time doesn't really matter, but if you know specific time periods, um, this is really great as well. So next we add files, and we'll just upload them for, from our computer. So I've got astronomy um, here, which they are not going to let me upload. So we'll just upload some random pictures. And we say upload. Um, you can see that it will let you upload images, videos, MP3s, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and PDF files. And I'll show you in a minute how we can add files that don't fall into those categories. So we'll say start upload. You'll see that it runs pretty quick. Depending on your connection speed, it's actually really um, a pretty fast process. So there is our one stack. Um, if we add another stack, it'll show up you know, on the timeline wherever it falls. Next, we can blog directly to the timeline. So we've got um, a place where we can add a blog title, description, tags. This works just like any other blog platform. It's got all the same kind of tools and, and widgets that we can use. What I like about this is we also have the HTML ability. So if you are working on or your students are working on a Web 2.0 project somewhere else on the web, they can always, um, you know, if it has embed code, they can take that embed code and put it right here um, in the blog area and it will put it on the on their timeline. So that's a really neat feature, but the, the blog works just like any other blog. Um, people can come in and comment and rate and all of those good things that make a blog so wonderful. So this is a good way for kids to come in and kind of reflect on what they're learning, um, add to what they've uploaded, you know, images that they've uploaded and things like that. So the blog is a really nice um, addition there. So they can add as many things as they want to their timeline, and they'll just show up across here. And then um, they can go in and design their capsule. I always save this part for last because kids kind of love to mess around with the look of their timeline and can spend forever here. So I, I always have them get all the content in first, and then they can go and choose. But you'll see there's a lot of themes to choose from. In addition, if they click design it themselves, they can upload a background image that directly fits what, whatever they're learning. So that's a really nice um, feature and gives them all kinds of creative license there. Um, under add background music, you can upload MP3s and that will play during while people are viewing the slideshow. Um, I've had kids create music in uh, MinaAviary.com, and I've also had them create it in GarageBand just as background. I've also had them record their own voices explaining what their timeline is about or kind of narrating, and that works really nicely. Um, I've also used it as a place to record reading. So, you know, different times throughout the year, we'll take a picture of students, we'll record them reading, um, you know, a selection, and then we'll do it again mid-year and at the end of the year, um, they've got this nice timeline where they can see and hear the progress that they've made throughout the year. And it kind of makes a neat time capsule for parents as well to have that. Um, but it gives, you know, students can kind of see that progress and it's really neat for them. So a variety of things you can do there. Obviously, you don't have to add any music um, or any audio if you don't want. 
And then capsule privacy, you'll see down here at the bottom, um, I'm going to just open this up by clicking on it. This is where I can change things about my capsule. So you can see the images that I have um, in that stack. I can change the title, the description, uh, the date and time. Privacy, you can have it set so that only friends can see. Friends would be anyone in their uh, class, maybe other teachers, parents, or they can have it set to private that the, only they can see. You can see right here that I've got a picture of myself. So for this stack, if I was a student, I would probably make it friends only or private, not public. Um, public means anyone in the world can see who's on capsules. So uh, we can make this stack private without making the entire timeline private. So that's up to you um, how you want to work that in your class. And then if you need to add or remove content, you can do that from here or delete um, the entire thing. So even though this one we could set, uh, this, this stack we could set to be private, we could set the whole timeline to be public so that anybody can look at the timeline, but that particular stack they wouldn't be able to see. So you can kind of work it where um, it's open for everyone and protected depending on your needs in your classroom. When students are finished with their timeline, they just click I'm finished here in the right corner and it's going to give them a nice preview of what it actually looks like. So you can see the stack actually looks like a stack. Um, if we had sound, we could adjust it here. We can get a link to share this capsule with others. Um, students can favorite their own capsules or other students' capsules, and then they can rate them and other people can rate them as well. Um, and then comments is where teachers can come in and kind of um, give students feedback. Other students can give each other feedback and um, ask questions, and that's just a great way to to interact and kind of collaborate on the learning that's happening in the classroom. You can see along here, along the bottom, we've got a slider. If I had more events, that slider would take me from one end of the timeline to the other. And then students can go ahead and edit their capsule from here. Um, if they're viewing a friend's capsule, uh, it will give them a button to invite that person to be a friend. Um, you can see that Capsules also has a free iPhone app, which is wonderful if you have um, the iPod Touch or the iPad in your school or classroom, um, that the capsules are available uh, from those devices as well. So under my stuff is where students will keep everything that they have created. Um, they can go through and edit their profile, which just looks like any profile. Um, all of their messages will be held in one place, and then they can look at all of their capsules, their recent activity, friends, etc. So. This is a, a great platform, a great way for students to share and collect um, learning, and that is Capsules.